So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi and today we're going to be going over how you can do near real-time image stylization using a convolutional neural network on actually using CoreML on the new iPhone XS using its A12 Bionic chip. There have been many great updates. In fact, in order to demo this near real-time image stylization, I've got my sister as a test subject and you'll be seeing more of her later as well. Hi, my name is Tanvi and I'm so excited to be part of Tanvi's video showing the new iPhone XS's neural engine. Thank you very much. This is going to be great. So now, first of all, what's so different about the new iPhone XS? The new iPhone XS is great because it has a lot of new performance enhancements. While it might not look all that different from the inside, it's completely re-architected. Of course, previously with the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, there was a special kind of ASIC that Apple implemented called the Neural Engine. The Neural Engine is a two-core chip dedicated to all neural network processing on the iPhone. That includes simple video compression when it comes to 4K video, but it also includes things like Face ID and other kinds of authentication and other kinds of Siri and machine learning work that goes on on your device. However, this year, what Apple has done with the new iPhone XS is they've taken that neural engine and upgraded it from two cores to eight cores, enabling it to go from 600, 600 billion neural network operations per second on the iPhone X to nowadays you can run five trillion neural network operations per second on the iPhone XS. It's really amazing what these performance enhancements can do. Of course, there's also an extra gigabyte of RAM, which for some applications could be useful. However, of course, if you're optimizing your memory usage, you shouldn't ever need that much RAM for your application. But apart from that, this also does allow for a lot of much, much more intensive machine learning work. Best part is that for the first time ever, developers can actually access the neural engine through CoreML. Previously, CoreML would either run on the CPU or GPU, but now you can actually run your CoreML predictions directly on the neural engine for maximum performance. And the best part is that even before your neural network operations ever hit the CPU, the GPU, or the neural engine, there's another custom chip developed by Apple that's all about actually routing specific operations to the correct correct computer, the correct chip. And so if a certain neural network operation is better to be done via the neural engine, it'll actually redirect that to the neural engine, whereas some operations might actually be better done on the CPU or the GPU. It's really great what this performance enhancement can do, and that's why now you can do almost real-time image stylization on the new iPhone XS. And that's the demo that I'd love to show you today as to how you can take a pre-trained convolutional neural network, more specifically, a neural network trained to style images in a mosaic format, and actually use that on the XS live with a camera feed coming in through the AV Foundation library and actually stylize it with the neural network to display on screen as it's happening. From there, the, uh, I will also compare that to the iPhone 10, take a look at its performance and see how it compares uh, and see if my sister is actually able to detect the difference and predict which video was shot by which phone based off of the performance of the videos and based off of how smooth that style stylization actually is. Of course, in some ways, there are more efficient methods through which you could do this. You could record an actual 60 frames per second video, feed that into the Swift program, and actually predict on all those frames at once, therefore using the neural engine to its maximum capacity and getting it done in much better performance. However, there are also some cases where you would want to do it in near real time. When Apple actually you know, opens up the neural engine more through CoreML and documents it a lot more, performance will be enhanced and of course you can also go ahead and quantize or prune weights from the neural network itself. However, for now, let's just take a vanilla convolutional neural network and take a look at how the demo works. Now though, let's take a look at a demo of how smooth you can get this near real-time image stylization by taking a look at how my phone is able to stylize a video of my sister in real time. All right, so now let's start up the demo and take a look at how it works. So as you can see, I've got an application on my screen over here called Real-Time Style Transfer. I'm going to click on it and immediately it starts live streaming the camera. And as you can see, my sister is being in real time styled as a mosaic and showed on my screen. Now, if you can just go ahead and wave for me. Perfect, thank you. As you can see, while it's not in perfect real time, it's almost in real time. And when these optimizations occur, when you go ahead and make the neural network more efficient, you will be able to get to nearly real time with this. 
Now what we're going to do though, is we're going to take a look at how the iPhone 10 handles this exact same situation, using the exact same neural network and the exact same parameters. We're going to take a look at how the iPhone 10 actually holds up to the new iPhone 10s and see which one is smoother and whether it's a noticeable difference. So now what you're seeing on your screen right now towards the left is the iPhone 10 and the exact same application running on it. Towards the right you're seeing the iPhone 10s. Of course the new one's powered by the A12 Bionic, the previous one's powered by the A11 Bionic. And so now my sister is going to go ahead and wave. And as you can see, you can immediately tell the difference in how smooth the new iPhone XS is in comparison to how choppy the older iPhone X is. The iPhone X itself was a huge leap in technology for its time, but the new iPhone XS is much, much faster even than that. Now, my sister does not know which side is which iPhone. They're both the same size, they're both the same parameters. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is show her both the videos and let's get her opinion on which one she thinks is the new iPhone XS and see if it's actually a noticeable difference in quality or in smoothness. Let's take a look. So which of these two clips do you think is recorded on the new iPhone XS? Well, that's pretty obvious. It was this one on the right. <laughs> that's right. So as you can tell, it's much, much smoother, uh, has a much, much higher frames per second count, uh, and at the same time, you can tell that well, it was recorded with a new chip. Question for you. Didn't iPhone 10 come out last year? How come there's such a big difference between the two? <laughs> it did come out last year, but first of all, that was the first iteration of the neural engine that they had. Very powerful at the time, but the new iPhone 10s has an even more powerful neural engine that can now handle many, many more operations than the previous iPhone 10 could, and therefore, such a big difference in real-time performance. Oh, so that one's more smooth than Much that Much smoother, one. absolutely. In a year. Yes, in one year, Apple went from being able to do really fast neural network operations to being able to do almost real-time image stylization. Mm -hmm. And one more question. I use so many filters on social media, such as Snapchat and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Is this similar to that? It looks like it. It is pretty similar, yes, but those use a slightly different technology, uh, at least with most of the filters. This one's actually using a convolutional neural network to extract styles from the weights of the neural network of certain images and to apply those weights to other images. Uh, and especially because of the wonderful libraries that we're using, like Coromel, we're not actually ruining the aspect ratio of the image at the same time, we're preserving that. Um, and so it is pretty similar to what you'd use on Snapchat or, or whatever else social media platform you want to use, um, but it uses a different technology. Technology. And this would be more useful if I had to put up a video and not a picture. Exactly. More specifically, not necessarily the technique, but the new iPhone is going to be much faster processing larger sets of data. I mean, as I mentioned before, if you wanted to do this more efficiently, you could take an entire video and send all the frames at once to the neural engine to maximize its performance, or you could just do what we're doing here and do it in real time, which of course really highlights the fastness of the single image performance of the new iPhone XS. Mm -hmm. And that would be very visible in a video form, not a picture. Exactly. That makes sense. Thank you. Of course. All right, so now let's take a look at the code that goes behind the application. The code is actually really, really simple. It's essentially taking images from AV Foundation, more specifically from the back camera device. It's feeding it into the ML model, getting the output and displaying that as soon as it can on the UI image view. Let's take a look at how it works. First of all, the storyboard is, again, very simple. It's really just one individual UI element, in this case, a UI image view, that takes up the whole screen. Uh, in this case, I've actually expanded it, uh, expanded it to be covered by the notch uh, and to expand out through the rounded corners in order to make sure that there isn't this weird space left like this, um, just to make it take up the whole screen, including the rounded corners, um, and to be covered by the notch as well, just to make it seem like a more immersive experience, and especially to optimize for the huge screen of the 10s Max. Now though, let's take a look at the code. To begin with, let's start off with the view controller. There are three very simple imports. Of course, we're going to need the UI kit for the UI view controller and other sorts of UI elements. Uh, we'll need the AV foundation or the audio video foundation for all the sorts of recording that's going to be done by this application. And of course, we're going to need CoreML to do all of the different predictions. Now, in this case, of course, we've just got our class called view controller uh, that will conform to UI view controller and, well, AV capture video data output sample buffer delegate. 
that's a mouthful, but essentially what that means is that the audio video foundation um, library or framework will be able to actually provide me um, with, with sample buffers. Uh, and I'll talk about what exactly that means in just a moment. Before we continue, though, let's take a look at the different variables that the view controller class has. First of all, of course, the image view. Um, this image view is going to let you display the current stylized image on screen. It's a UI image view. Um, of course, the model that's actually going to be uh, run predictions against. Uh, in this case, I'm using the FMS Mosaic 1 model. So this model is trained by Justin Johnson. His GitHub username is JC Johnson, and he has a wonderful repository called Fast Neural Style. There will be a link to it in the description below. It's a wonderful repository with a lot of different models. You should definitely check it out. This will actually take in, uh, an input as a 720 by 720 by 3, which basically means a color image, and will output another image, in this case, again, 720 by 720, but this is the stylized image in the mosaic form. If we go back, there are four more variables here. These actually relate to the way that AV Foundation is going to let us actually capture video data. Um, in this case, there's just one AV capture session, and this is actually the session that's going to provide me with images. There's the AV capture device. In this case, the rear camera is the device that I'm focusing on. The device input, which actually handles capturing input from the device, and video data output, which actually handles um, uh, g giving me the output from the video stream. Apart from that, there's also one more variable called latest image, and so essentially this uh, AV capture session will continuously update latest image with the latest image from the camera feed that the neural network can then go ahead and query at whatever speed that it wants to. Then in the view did load function, we've actually got a lot of code, but it's pretty, pretty simple. First of all, I initialize the model by creating a new FNS Mosaic 1 model, meaning fast neural style Mosaic 1 model. After that, I create a new AV capture session and set that to my self.capture session. Then all of this code over here is essentially all around uh, setting up the, uh, the audio video foundation library to give me uh, video output. And so essentially what this means is towards the end over here, you can just take a look uh, at I actually set the delegate um, for the capture session to self. And what that lets me do, and this is happening over here, and what that lets me do is essentially every single time the capture session gets a new frame from the video stream, it's going to call this function over here called capture output. I'll talk about how that works in just a moment. First of all, though, once I actually start running that capture session, I then call one of my own functions called show stylized. We'll get to that again in just a second, but first let's take a look at the capture output function. Essentially, the capture output function is called by the AV Foundation library itself. More specifically, it's inherited um, by the AV capture video data output sample buffer delegate protocol. Now, essentially what this does is it gives me the latest CM sample buffer, uh, which is essentially the current image from the camera stream. So I just need to do a little bit of processing work in order to convert that sample buffer uh, into a UI image. But then once I do get this UI image, uh, I set self.latest image to that UI image. And I do this in the main thread to make sure there are no, um, th th there are no problems with, with the threads. Then what I do, though, is, of course, as this function is being called, I then go ahead and run the show stylized function. The show stylized function essentially takes a look at the latest image itself. Now, if this latest image is not nil, because, of course, towards the beginning, it is nil over here. If it is not nil, however, it's then going to go ahead and run that image through the neural network. It's going to create a new UI image out of the output of the neural network in order to actually show that on the image view. Of course, from there, though, we also need to make sure that the stylized image continuously updates with new camera frames. So I put a little bit of a delay, more specifically a delay of two thousandth of a second. Um, and after that delay, I call this function over again. It's going to go ahead and show the new stylized image. And then a two thousandth of a second later, it'll go ahead and do that again. Now, of course, you could increase this delay if you want to. There is really no need to. And the only reason the delay is there is because if there is and then the recursion happens so quickly um, that it reaches its recursion limit very, very quickly. In fact, within half a second of you starting the application and you're unable to do anything with it. 
However, the main sort of uh, heart of the code are lines 118 to 122, because these lines actually let you take the model prediction, convert it into an image with these three lines, and then show that image on top of the image view. Of course, however, since uh, Coromel does use these uh, pixel buffers, and it does not use UI images for input to the model, unfortunately, there is this little helper function that was taken from this blog, for which there is a link in the code as well as the description. Um, and this function essentially converts a UI image to a CV pixel buffer um, that can be fed into a machine learning model very, very easily. And so that is essentially how this code works. Of course, there's a lot more behind the actual training of the neural network model, but that's a topic for another time. But I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's what I had to cover for today uh, as to how you can actually take the new iPhone XS and its wonderful machine learning capabilities and performance and actually run real-time style transfer at a much, much faster pace than you could with previous devices, like even the iPhone 10. And so again, I really do hope you enjoyed that video tutorial. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in today. That's what I had for this video today. If you do have any more questions, suggestions, or feedback, please do feel free to leave them down in the comments section below, as I'd love to answer any questions you may have. And apart from that, if you do like the video and you'd like to see more content just like this, please do make sure to consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel, as it really does help out a lot, and turn on the, turn on the bell notifications if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content. Apart from that, if you do think this video could be helpful to anyone else you know, please do consider sharing it as well. And apart from that, the code will be in the description. And that's what I had for this tutorial today. Again, thank you very much, everyone. That's going to be all for now. Goodbye.